complications of the abdominal hernia. Right. So complications can be divided into two. Chronic complications and acute complications. Chronic complications include uh, irreducible hernia. Right? The hernia is irreducible into the abdominal cavity. And coprostasis, that's overflow of intestine located in the hernial sac with the intestinal condens. Those are the chronic complications. Acute complications include a strangulation of the hernia and inflammation of the hernial sac and hernial pores. Right, so let's start with the chronic, right? Irreducible hernia develops in continuously existing hernia in response to injury and inflammation of the internal surface of the hernial sac, contributing to its fusion with the contents of the hernial sac. Uh, the clinical picture of irreducible hernia, right? So the hernial protrusion is soft, painless, does not reduce into the abdominal cavity. The, the hernial ring is not defined or partially defined, there is negative cough impulse. And treatment of irreducible hernia is elective surgery, and the extent of surgery is similar to that of uncomplicated hernia. Coprostasis. This occurs more frequently in elderly patients suffering from constipations. Intestinal loops located in the hernial sac are filled with intestinal contents. Difficult outflow of intestinal contents gradually leads to the compression of the afferent intestine by the efferent lobe. The symptoms of coprostasis include the following. The volume of herniation gradually increases. Pain in the protrusion increases gradually with the filling of uh, intestinal loops located in the hernial sac with intestinal contents. Protrusion of daffy consistency, painless, irreducible, and the skin over it is not changed. General and local features uh, characteristic for intestinal obstruction may eventually appear. For treatment, drug stimulation of intestine, dilation of the anal canal and manual removal of feces, oil and saline enema, infusion therapy are indicated in the initial stage of uh, coprostasis. In cases of uh, treatment failure, Hernia repair with removing uh, faces into the distal intestine is indicated. Strangulated hernia. Right, so this is the infringement of hernia condensed by the muscular aponeurotic tissues of the abdominal wall, uh, which forms the hernia ring. Right, so there are, we can say there are three main types. There is elastic infringement. Right. This is a sudden increase in intra-abdominal pressure during physical exertion, uh, straining, coughing, exit of abdominal contents into the hernial sac and its infringement in the hernial ring, resulting in development of blood supply disturbance in the strangulated organ. Fecal infringement. In fecal infringement, the Efferent lobe is squeezed by the overflowing afferent lobe filled with the feces uh, with the developing bowel obstruction. The third one is mixed, right? So in mixed infringement, there is occurrence of uh, both elastic and fecal infringement. They are special forms of infringements, right? Which is the fourth type, right? It can be richest hernia if the Hernial condens is part of the uh, bowel circumference to hernia, or this one W shaped right, or retrograde infringement. Right in this case, strangulation of the a small intestinal loop mesentery located in the uh, abdominal cavity between the two intestinal loops located in the hernial sac. Pathological changes in strangulated hernia. 
right so it depends on the degree of uh compressed hernia content time elapsed since infringement and the structure of the strangulated organ changes at the level of strangulation ring thus a strangulation furrow is formed in intestinal strangulation the intestinal walls becomes thinner uh, necrosis will appear starting with the intestinal mucosa changes in the organ located in the hernial sac there will be venous stasis swelling of the intestinal walls increased compression of blood vessels intestinal necrosis with development of hernial sac phlegmon or peritonitis changes in the tissues of the organ in front of the hernial sac in case of intestinal strangulation, the passage violation and widening of afferent intestinal loop in which venous stasis and edema of its walls develop, also sequestration of fluid into the lumen, fermentation of bowel contents and formation of gas, uh, increase in intestinal volume and disturbed circulation, of its walls. The clinical picture includes the following. Sudden sharp pain in the herniation area or abdomen, rapid increase of protrusion, extension, and tenderness to palpation, appearance of irreducibility, no hernial ring and negative cough impulse, intestinal strangulation, uh, results in symptoms of obstruction, thus nausea, vomiting, uh, fecal and gas retention, flatulence, and in cases of intestinal necrosis, there will be symptoms of peritonitis. How do we treat strangulated hernia? Right, so the this is a surgical emergency, right? So this is what we do. Dissection of the hernial sac only after a surgeon fixes the hernial contents with his or her finger. Then the hernial ring will be incised. Right. So after the incision, there is assessment of viability of the organs. Right. So the signs of uh, non-viability of the organs include the following. Number one, it will be dark colored. Uh, it will be tarnished. Right. So the intestine will not be shiny. Intestinal wall laxity, absence of peristalsis, and pulsation of the mesenteric vessels. If there is a doubt about the viability of the intestine, the surgeon takes measures for its repair. Right, so there will be injection of 40 to 60 ml of uh, 0.25% Novocaine solution into the intestinal mesentery, and the intestine is uh, uh, wrapped with cloth dampened with hot solution of 0.9% sodium chloride and 10 to 15 minutes later the doctor re-evaluates the viability of the intestine. Uh, if there is necrosis they should be resection so further mobilization in removing 35 to 40 centimeters of the afferent loop and 15 to 20 centimeters of etherent loop is done, right? So after this resection, then we close in your plasty. All right, so I said chronic complications are irreducibility and coprostasis, and acute complications are strangulation. This is the first one we just covered. And the next complication is called the inflammation, right? Inflammation of the hernia sac, all right? So uh, this develops as a result of the hernial sac infection from the inside or outside, right? And the causes of this inflammation include the following. Acute inflammatory process in organs located in the hernial sac, that's acute appendicitis, if inside the hernia there is appendix, uh, diverticulitis, or regional enteritis. Penetration of fluid into the hernial cavity from the abdominal cavity, necrosis of strangulated intestine in the hernial sac, spreading of infection to the hernial sac from the skin 
right, if they are boils or abrasions. Clinical picture of uh, inflammation of the hernia. Pain at the site of herniation that occurs spontaneously and increases gradually. Hernia protrusion increase in volume, swollen, hot to touch and painful to palpation, gradually becoming irreducible. In case of inflammation, a fluctuation can be determined. Hernia ring is not determined and negative cough impulse. Symptoms of intoxication include weakness, malaise, fever, 38 to 39 degrees Celsius, chills, dyspeptic disorders. Uh, blood count, right? So there will be leukocytosis with a leukocyte left shift. And if untreated, it can uh, lead to peritonitis. How do we treat uh, uh, inflammation? Right. So in case of serous inflammation, we do conservative therapy, a systemic and local antibiotic therapy, cleansing enema, and physiotherapy. In cases of purulent inflammation and phlegmon of the hernia sac, what do we do? Extensive uh, dissection and drainage of hernia sac and its membranes, right, if indicated. If the hernia sac contains necrotic intestinal loops, its resection is indicated, taking into account the probability of necrosis and fistula formation. Hernioplast is not performed. The wound is widely opened and drained. Secondary complications of hernias include uh, acute strangulated intestinal obstruction, peritonitis, phlegmon of hernia. But we can prevent uh, these complications by uh, improving health education among the population about the need for surgical treatment to prevent the development of complications, targeted screening of hernias for pre-planned patients' health improvement, increasing in the number of elective surgeries in case of contraindications. Contraindications include advanced age, chronic illness, etc.